Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duct Tape Marketing Podcast. This is John Jantz and uh, no guest today. I'm doing another solo show. I Some of you may not like these. I get a lot of great feedback <laughs> when it's just me because uh, it gives me a chance to kind of break down uh, some of my thinking, uh, my opinions, <laughs> quite frankly. And today is no different. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about trends for 2024. Now, uh, before I get into <clears throat> any of my prognostication, whew, that's a big word to use in the morning, um, trends shows, trend posts, <laughs> trend predictions are stupid. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because, you know, a lot of times by the time you spot a trend, it's not really a trend anymore. <laughs> it's it's happening. Or you're just taking guesses at stuff that you think should happen. Uh, there, there's so many over the years, there's so many things that people talked about. This is the next trend. And, you know, 10 years later, we're still talking about it. I'm going to mention a couple of things today that we've been talking about for a long time. Um, and that's the thing about trends, I think, um, that, that are really make them difficult to identify with any clarity. Um, I think it's really more a matter of, of acknowledging something that's coming maybe and saying, well, gosh, how could that impact me? And then going about your business, right? <laughs> um, it reminds me of the 1926 novel by Ernest Hemingway, uh, The Sun Also Rises. There's a character in there and he, he asks, I think his name's Bill, yeah, Bill says uh, to Mike, so how'd you go bankrupt? Um, and he said two ways, gradually and suddenly. So, And I think that's the thing about trends is, is there's a lot of things that we've talked about for years. It's kind of the gradual, it's coming. And then by the time we, you know, it gets here, it's like, wow, you know, that was fast. AI is a perfect example. I'm going to talk about AI, of course. How could I not, right? Uh, but uh, AI is a perfect example. It's actually been coming for probably close to 10 years, um, certainly just in the very guts of things. I mean, if you've ever used Google Maps to get somewhere, that has used AI forever. Siri has used AI uh, you know, since its inception. Obviously, it's gotten better. The, the technology's gotten better. Uh, but you know, those things have been baked into things for a long time. And then chat GPT comes along, and all of a sudden, it's the masses um, and sudden um, as a trend. Um, so that's my table setting, you know, before I get into, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about uh, five things that I think uh, will impact the agency world, will impact uh, the, uh, the marketing uh, world for small to mid-sized businesses as well. So the first one, as I already mentioned, is AI. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly moved past trend. It's, it's here. Uh, but there were a lot of things that came along that way. Social media, mobile marketing, even search, uh, quite frankly, all came along slowly and then suddenly they they were here and i think ai uh, certainly fits into that category i think it's going to be a little different we talk about uh, some of those other things like search and um, you know pay per click when it came along and and social media when it came we we talk about those now as channels and i think that the realization uh, or that we all need to understand on it with ai is we won't be talking about it as some trendy new thing it's just going to be baked into everything it's going to be how we go about our day uh, so for example you know, a lot of people are using it for content writing, uh, which is absolutely a, a great use. We teach it. <laughs> we, uh, we, we hold boot camps uh, uh, to, uh, to teach people how to use it uh, quickly and efficiently. Um, but we, I, I also use it to take a spreadsheet and say, tell me what's in this. <laughs> um, to summarize a document, say, give me the high spots. To take a video and say, um, you know, I recorded a video with a client, for example, and, and a testimonial video. Um, and I just, you know, I have it efficient. I could go through the, the transcript of that, uh, but I take the transcript and say, give me three or four great sound bites. And it, it, it takes, it extracts from the already great content uh, very efficiently. So I think that kind of usage is going to become just commonplace. We won't even think about it. We'll go to ChatGPT or some other AI platform um, every single day to accomplish some of the tasks that, that we accomplish. Um, we'll write SOPs that will allow uh, people who have maybe no experience in uh, the field that we're asking them to work in, and they'll be able to efficiently use some of these tools um, like any good research assistant might use um, in in aiding somebody writing a book and aiding somebody who is trying to come up with a, a draft for some, some content. It, it's certainly going to 
filter in. I mean, right now, um, there are people that, that you know, play with uh, Dolly and, um, you know, play with the, the other image creating tools, but that's going to get better. Um, and it's going to spill into video. Um, there are platforms today. I'm, I'm not saying that they're there or perfect yet, but there are platforms today that you can actually train uh, with some amount of your voice um, of you actually speaking and you actually on video, and they will actually be able to take any transcript or text that script <laughs> that you feed it and then create very synced up live looking uh, video. So, you know, those the those advances, you know, are going to just keep coming every single day. But I think the real power of many of the AI tools is just the efficiency and the time saving uh, aspects of, you know, it will maybe someday get to the point where it can write uh, better than a human being. Um, I I don't know that we'll ever get there because, again, I I always tell people that I it, it can create great content, but it can't create context. It can't understand the context in which somebody might be consuming that content. And I think that's always going to be the element uh, that a strategic marketer um, can certainly add to anything. All right, let's move on to number two. Um, search, I think... Uh, it's again, it's one of those that has evolved gradually. I mean, whatever Google wanted it to be, it became to a large degree. Um, but it's gotten, um, I, I don't know if it's gotten better or not. It's uh, certainly evolved in terms of the results that they show. And uh, from an SEO standpoint, from a marketer's standpoint, certainly evolved in terms of how you get those results. But I think we're actually going to see in 2024, um, some pretty dramatic changes in uh, the really the whole paradigm of <coughs> search and how search is done and how we get results and what results we're looking for. You know, things like answer engines uh, are going to and optimizing for answer engines are going to happen. I, I the, the fight is always going to be with Google because Google wants to show paid ads. I mean, that's where they make their money. Uh, they don't make any money in search. <laughs> they make their money because they are able to show all those ads right along with search in a very contextual way. So are they going to kill the golden goose or is the golden goose going to be, you know, taken from them in a lot of ways um, without them uh, unless that they unless they respond in an entirely new way in which we get results I think there will be ad free um, search engine um, opportunities I think that there will be ways in which we can just um, similar to what you do in chat GPT today uh, that that is not um, that's not far off from the model, I think, uh, of search where you just go and put in, I'm going on a trip to blah, 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 and I want to visit you know, these, and I have five days, and here's who's going to be in my, my group, and it's going to spit out an itinerary for you as opposed to just giving you what um, TripAdvisor you know, says are the top uh, 10 uh, spots or to go visit because TripAdvisor is able to dominate uh, the search results. Doesn't matter, doesn't mean they're any good, uh, but a lot of people rely on them. And so I think that, you know, that ability to create custom, very detailed search is similar to what I think people experience in ChatGPT today. ChatGPT is not perfect. It's not real time. <laughs> it doesn't have, it, it's, you know, it's terribly inaccurate. Its citations are bad. Its data is bad. It gives you, it, it sometimes uh, says, well, here's an answer. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. Um, but but I think the experience that people are, are, are having um, with that type of search query um, is certainly going to be what we expect. And I think you're going to see um, some sudden changes. <laughs> We've had gradual changes. Um, and I think we're going to see some sudden changes in search. Number three. Um, this is another funny one, you know, video, live streaming. They've been around now, well, 20 years, really, uh, live streaming, you know, maybe 10 years. Um, people have used them in various ways, certainly promotionally. I mean, you look at what's going on with the micro uh, video, snack video in, in places like TikTok and every other platform that copies them. Um, and, and so it's not a matter of saying, oh, video's here. It's finally here now. We should be using it. I mean, people have obviously been using it effectively for many, many years. The reason I put it on here as a trend is um, I believe that it is going to become, video is going to become the basis 
for how content is created. Um, and what I mean by that is, is it will be video first um, for, for almost all content. Um, and <clears throat> the reason I say that is because, you know, marrying it with some of the AI tools, I think gives you the ability to get some amazing efficiencies out of, you know, a 10 minute video the, where you're explaining something, you can take that transcript um, and create a 3,000 word blog post that is formatted exactly uh, the way the current uh, search engine uh, crawling is looking for. You can take that video and cut it up into 27 TikTok type um, videos where it'll take out the ums, which uh, I do frequently <laughs> give you. Um, so, so I think that that while the trend itself of video uh, is hardly a trend, but I believe we're going to see an explosion in the creation of video because it is the content first platform uh, for lots of your video creation. There's no denying the trust factor that comes uh, comes across um, in video. There's no denying that people like to consume video. Um, look at what happens in YouTube every single day. So I think you're you're. You know, it's been around, but um, I, I'm leaning into the trend, uh, the idea of, of video first in terms of content. All right, another one. Say, I'm going to say this. This doesn't sound like a broken record. Another one that's been around <laughs> for quite some time. Um, data, privacy, and complying with data privacy. It's the whole reason we have uh, Google Analytics 4. Curse it all you want, <laughs> but the uh, uh, Google got tired of being fined um, by countries that have passed uh, strict data privacy rules. Uh, Facebook is certainly moving towards it. Remember the days when you could um, have all these selects uh, that, that really allowed you, you, you. I remember seeing in the early days of uh, Facebook targeting somebody that was trying to target his wife because it was her birthday um, and, and he wanted her to be the only one in the audience <laughs> that could actually see the ad that he placed. And he was able to get that granular uh, that he was able to accomplish that. So the, the days of that granular level of targeting are, are certainly gone. And so we've been talking about this one for a long time. I mean, GDPR, when was that passed? Five years ago? <laughs> um, and you're not really hearing people talking about it. You certainly are hearing people give lip service to it. Um, you're hearing people that are doing some, you know, just kind of basic um, compliance uh, with it, you know, with privacy policies and, and terms of services and things like that that have become kind of standard fare. But I think that the real, um, you know, the, the, the adoption uh, came about, uh, you know, punitively, right? It's like, if you don't adopt this, you're going to get slapped on the hand or worse. <laughs> um, and that's never a really great motivator for most people. What's happening now certainly is that the the ability to get third party data is just online, at least is is going away. Um, it's kind of funny. But uh, you know, again, I came into this world of marketing before we had online and digital, and you still can today offline uh, get some pretty incredible amount of data, you can buy lists of people that live in a certain geography, make a certain income and have a certain disease, uh, have been diagnosed with a certain disease that you want to target. That's a terrible example, but that's the kind of stuff you can get offline. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if, if that level of privacy ever comes to the offline world. But it's certainly here in the digital world, uh, third-party data is uh, just going to get harder and harder to get. So what's the trend part of that? Obviously, building enough trust to get first-party data. And that's well, that's the game we've been at forever, right? Enough trust that somebody will give you their email address and other information, maybe their phone number and their mailing address because they want to buy a product from you. You know, that level of data collection um, as, as, and trust building to get that level of data collection, I think is going to become the, uh, you know, event. it's going to become more and more apparent that people that don't have that um, are, are not going to just be able to rely on, you know, bombing Facebook ads. All right, the last one, not a trend at all, <laughs> except aspects of it are. Um, and this is one of those that has, has been with us forever. It's, I'm just going to throw it out. It's customer experience. Um, but 
It's one of those that I think the uh, the pandemic here. I've, I'm here. I'm in twenty end of twenty twenty three. Blame, still blaming the pandemic, but it's one of those that I think really elevated uh, people's expectation um, when it comes to customer experience. And frankly, that's um, that's employee experience. That's uh, you know that's uh, culture inside of organizations. I think those all go very much hand in hand. And I think we've seen a lot of of rebellion almost um, with organizations that don't really get that. And and customer experience means a lot of things. And that's probably the thing that's changed the most is what that actually means to people. You know, it used to be uh, solely that uh, that somebody answered the phone and that they um, were nice <laughs> and that somebody was able to get a resolution to a problem that they had. Um, <clears throat> when somebody became a customer, it was... It was a, if not joyful, it was at least a convenient um, experience. And I think that today, um, there are a lot of companies that aren't doing that, even matching that level. I mean, try getting a, an insurance company on the phone. Um, try getting a rental car you know, agency that you left your prized water bottle in their car. I know that's a very specific example. <laughs> try getting them on the phone, right? It's not going to happen. So there are a lot of people that are not <clears throat> doing it. So in a lot of ways, you know, what what the digital presence has really done and, and AI bots, you know, have really done is they've they've given people one of two paths. They've given them the ability to wall off, you know, any need for human interaction, right? It's like, here, talk to our bot, go through, fill out this form, <clears throat> go through the phone tree to get to the answer that you want. Um, so it's given people the ability to actually provide no service uh, in a lot of ways. But it's also given people the ability <clears throat> to provide the level of experience that somebody wants. There are certain instances in which um, I'll use an example of um, my eye doctor. Uh, when I am up for an annual exam, uh, I can go to their website and I can make an appointment. Uh, I will get a notification when that appointment is coming. Um, <clears throat> I'll go to the appointment and, you know, there was, there was no need. It was actually far more efficient for both parties to have that online scheduling. So there was really no need to have somebody answer a phone and say, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll get back to you like five times later if <laughs> we finally get the appointment scheduled. So it offers the ability when used correctly to offer a frictionless, very speedy, very convenient experience. And I think those are elements of an elevated customer experience um, that, that people want and expect today, uh, married then with true trust building value at every possible interaction. And I think that that um, is clear to me that if, if we're not reaching out to our existing customers and making sure that we are meeting their evolving needs, that we are helping them achieve the goals that they want to achieve, we are helping them with the transformation that they want to achieve that's that's our job um <clears throat> you know having an ai bot or you know having an faq <laughs> section on our website those are nice those are things that give people the, the the speed and convenience that they want but then we need to supplement that i think with the uh, what i used to call hugs and handshakes uh that we can do even if it's done online done via zoom done via one-to-one -one video on loom you know, those types of touches um, people are expecting. And, and the beauty of elevating your customer experience is that not everybody's doing it. So it is a brilliant way to stand out. All right, that's it for my wrap-up of the 2024 trends. Nothing too trendy <laughs> in there. Uh, it's more a matter of recognizing that uh, trends uh, happen gradually and then suddenly. All right, take care. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you've got any comments or thoughts on these trends, you've got anything you want to add, I'm just John at Duct Tape Marketing. And of course, we love those reviews and uh, five stars that you give us uh, <laughs> in the various places that you listen to your podcast. All right, take care. Hopefully we'll run into you one of these days soon out there on the road.